Widespread use of the internet has brought with it some challenges, particularly to the security of our personal information and business information systems. Cyberspace has become a new frontier for criminal activity, including data and identity theft. The challenges of cybersecurity have created a new battlefield where governments, corporations, and individuals are all at risk. We've embraced technology with wild abandon, and yet at the same time, we haven't given due consideration, in my opinion, to the potential downsides, the risks, the unintended consequences of using technology. When it comes to the internet, it has produced tremendous savings, there's no doubt, but it's also opened us up to vulnerabilities that we hadn't anticipated. And that involves critical infrastructure online. It involves businesses that are accessing the internet, but also opening themselves up to potential intrusion, data theft, all the array of problems that we're starting to read about in the newspapers. I think we as individuals are very naive to just how widespread this particular uh, issue is uh, and uh, just how much of a threat it is to national security but also to our own personal security. Um, our national infrastructure is under attack, our banking systems are constantly under attack, the computers that we have in our uh, home networks in our own residences are constantly under attack and are being appropriated by people in uh, other countries and also in our own country for, for uh, criminal activity uh, and espionage and threats to national security. Elements in many countries have quietly entered the cyber warfare arena, and their activity poses a risk to our critical infrastructure, including U.S. government and other computer and communications networks. Protecting an information infrastructure requires constant vigilance. In 2002, security breach notification laws were enacted in most U.S. states, including Washington, in response to an escalating number of breaches of consumer databases containing personally identifiable information. And in 2008, the U.S. government is pushing to spend $6 billion on cybersecurity. As awareness becomes increasingly important, institutions and universities are putting more resources into and focusing their curriculum on information assurance education. As the director for the Center of Information Assurance and Cybersecurity at the University of Washington Information School, Dr. Barbara Endicott Popovsky has adopted military information training methods in her classroom. Well, it started as a collaboration with West Point and Ron Dodge, who headed up ITOC, which is the West Point unit that trains cadets in information warfare, had developed a military based, contextually military based game that was being used to train cadets and for inner army, navy kinds of competitions. And he translated that game to a civilian kind of application where you're dealing with e-commerce sites that are being bombarded by attackers. And he took that game, that model, to universities and began to engage them in wanting to adopt this gaming environment into their classes. And so I thought it would be great in our information assurance series to include a cyber defense exercise. For the past four years, Barbara had partnered with Fort Lewis to hold a one-day training session. But word spread quickly, and more colleges and universities wanted to participate. So this year, Barbara decided to host the first regional Pacific Rim Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. Microsoft generously offered to sponsor the event. Microsoft chose to be a sponsor in this event because obviously we care a lot about cybersecurity and securing the ecosystem for IT systems across the world, not only for our customers, but for governments and other agencies. I think that cybersecurity is a very critical component of curricula, and so we're glad to support the University of Washington's efforts in producing strong students coming out of university that have really great skills. Securing Microsoft as a host site was a major bonus, but the work was far from done. I'm Christian Seifert. I'm a PhD student at Victoria University of Wellington in New Zealand. I was uh, part of the organizing committee, um, filling the project management role, so take care of the project plan, things like that. My name is Brian Hay. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Over the last six months, it's been uh, built in this environment, so 
designing the, the system or choosing the systems that were going to be in the environment, uh, building those systems, building test systems, and then the last few days um, has been actually leading the deployment of those systems in the room here. There's an XP box run there that I think I, I may just have done that. I don't know if it's finished yet or not. If it says done at the bottom, then uh, okay. it's finished. We had a, a staging event about two months ago in which we set up a, a small competition environment um, in which we just went through practice exercises, made sure the uh, network is working, the images are up to date, things like that. After seven months of preparation and weekly phone conversations, the final challenge was the two-day setup. My name is Rick Davidson and I'm an undergrad student at University of Washington at Tacoma. The most challenging part of the prior two days was uh, trying to get all the cabling done in, in a way that it wouldn't interfere with the 100 plus bodies that were going to be in here. When you consider not only the ethernet cables but the power cables coming off each box, that's a lot of wire running around. So we wanted to make sure that it was done neatly and safely so that it wouldn't cause problems, people tripping over wires and dragging computers off the tables and whatnot. The room is arranged so that there are nine circular tables and on each table there are nine laptops. Eight of them are configured into the switch and then one is going straight back to the core router and that's what they're using as a backtrack machine so they can simulate coming from outside their network and testing their own configurations inside. I'd like to welcome all of you to the first annual Pacific Rim Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition. And on April 26, 2008, the very first Pacific Rim Regional Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition took place, with nine teams from Washington, Idaho, and Alaska competing. The games begin. Let's rumble. Uh, okay, at least one came online. David, what was this for? Just a sec. Yeah, yeah. Each team in the competition operates as a business. In this case, a newspaper company. Essentially, it's a newspaper site. They have stories that are available on the web. They have users, reporters, editors, managers in their environment that they need to uh, handle, and, and they've got a public on the outside that they need to produce web content for. They need to allow them to uh, set up for delivery of, of the newspaper to their homes, so provide credit card information and things like that. In a perfect world, they want us to come up with a design of how we'd like to see the network, and I'm basically working on that. So I'm basically just doing research right now where Philip and Nick are on the maintenance side. I'm looking for any kind of error messages or anything. They have things pretty covered. There. They're a pretty damn good team, I'd say. This was a very realistic environment because you often come into a new system and you don't know what the previous team has set up. Uh, it could have been good, it could have been bad, or just the main thing is you don't know. And it may or may not be broken, but they, they need to see what's there and see what services are hanging out in the wind that an attacker might want to get a hold of. Each team will be judged and scored in three categories. The first is how well they keep their network up and running properly. Just the, the input I'll give you at this point is uh, you need to get your DHCP and DNS operational as soon as possible. Those sites are currently down right now, and it looks like your website is down. Okay, check it again, Al. It should have just come back up. I'm Bob Bungie from DeVry University. I'm part of the organizing committee, and I'm working the scoring engine. This does automated testing to see if their web servers are running, to see if their email servers are providing email, and to see if their domain name servers are resolving internet domain names. They get tested three times within a five-minute window. If those services are up and running, they pass their test. If those services are not up and running, they fail their test. All right, let me have one of your administrators bring up your Active Directory. I want to see your user account database. The white team keeps track of each team's ability to perform administrative tasks even while under attack. I'm Brady Bloxham. I'm an information security researcher for Idaho State University. I'm the, the white team captain. So what I did is I designed the injects or the challenges that are given to uh, each team and uh, they carry out the tasks and then we come back and score them. Okay, do a search for Campbell. Uh, 10.0.1.13. 10 .1 .13. Uh, judges assigned to each team. That way they, they know who to go to, they know who to deal with throughout the competition. Injects will be delivered to each team at the same time. During the course of the two days, each team will do 15 injects. One example of an inject is to add new users to the domain. Uh, another inject may be a little more technical. 
uh, such as install Nagios on the on a server so that they can monitor all the all the network traffic and network services. I am printing out the inject for block IM and P2P traffic right now. Did you print password policy? I print password policy, yeah, password, password audit. And... Yep, that's cool. I created a step-by-step -step process of how to carry out the judging portion of the challenge. So we'll normally sit down with the team captain or whoever the team captain assigns to carry out the inject and have them show us basically how they carried it out and prove to us that it's working properly. That is their mail server, but they opened HTTP on it for some reason as well. So that's not good for them. The final scoring system is carried out by the red team. This is the attack team. What are they doing? I don't know, but they're sending weird packets to us. I don't watch back. They might be trying to attack one of the vulnerabilities in SSH1. My name is Mike Acker, and I'm the Vice President of the Puget Sound ISSA. By the first day, what we wanted to do was fingerprint their layout. So we came in with minimal knowledge, um, zero knowledge of their network. So what we would do is start by mapping out their network and discovering what operating systems, what services are running, and what applications they're running. Um, from there, we can try to gain further entry into the network by specifically targeting these services. Here's all the POP3 passwords. Okay. Oh, and another one just came in. We're also doing all kinds of other fun things, such as changing passwords on them, um, locking them out of their routers, other things that the scoring engine cannot pick up. Did you close port 22 on www? No. You have been nailed by Mr. Bojo. What we wanted to do was bring in a team of real-world professionals in the security industry. And so the whole idea for us being here is to present a real-life situation of a threat against these students who are defending their environments, which in essence is mimicking a corporate environment. I'm impressed. You finally got the SQL injection attack working. That's really good. Do you have time to set up the firewall on the Linux? Yeah, uh, time. For two days, teams get pounded by injects and attacks. They said it's been hard. <laughs> Yeah, I think the injects, the business tasks that we give them are keeping them quite busy. They serve someone overall budget, so I'm looking up on Cisco's side trying to find a kind of an, a, an estimate of uh, routers and switches that we might want to use, along with firewall, maybe a couple servers, and kind of come up with a mock budget. And then they also want like a, an, a time implementation schedule. So I've also probably come up with a mock up of that. And today we have a very strong red team. Um, so they're getting pounded very hard with attacks, and I think the stress level today is, is a little bit higher than yesterday. Uh, 10 0 no, which we still have nothing I on. still have nothing. I don't think we're on the network. We can bring over the internet box and look at what ports we need to do that, because I'm not sure that we're actually going to be able to finish up the firewall on time. Do you make a new group at all? Make a new group in the main news for. Mm. No, not liking that. There are no rules when it comes to cyber warfare, and the red team is enjoying a great deal of success. I used the Nessus scanner they had installed on the machine to scan their local network. So we have them completely owned. Every vulnerability is now, I'll drop that into mine as well. Over the course of two days, we've been pretty successful. It's been a little bit chaotic, and we also decided to mix things up this year. So we had this idea yesterday where we said, okay, they're being given injects. Um, and it's a physical piece of paper that's printed out and it's given to the teams. So what we did was we obtained a template of that and we wrote our own injects asking for them to create usernames and passwords for Telnet and SSH. And we found a random IT support person to walk around and hand it out to them, for instance, and trick them into just giving us access. We got one of our admin accesses uh, compromised and they were actually going in and messing with some of our stuff, but we kicked them out real quickly. So. The teams are getting hands-on experience that is difficult to simulate in a classroom. Our main goal here is just to train students in the arts of cybersecurity. We want to have our students as strong as they can be to go out there and defend networks and protect uh, businesses and homes and government agencies and uh, be able to do everything they can to secure our critical infrastructure. We're hoping to have a dynamic regional event that feeds into the national competition every year. Uh, we're the Pacific Rim Regional collegiate cyber defense competitions. We're hoping to have teams from uh, Alaska, Hawaii, possibly New Zealand, Australia, parts around the Pacific Rim. Among those observing the competition was Gerald Lau from the University of Hawaii, who plans to field his own team. I thought it would be a more simple, just as defense of a server, and not with all of the uh, services that they need to keep up. 
uh, also to the complexity of all this uh, in terms of the setup. It was amazing actually, I was uh, quite impressed. I'm hoping that I can just get a group that can just compete at this level. Um, I think this event really set the bar for us to try to strive for, so I got my work cut out. Three, two, one. Uh, Attention teams. The first Pacific Rim Regional Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition has come to an end. Each team has learned a lot and gets to hear from their attackers in a post-game question and answer. How successful were you on a percentage basis? Like when you do a barrage of attacks, how many of them uh, succeeded or how many failed? Most everybody, I think, they tried to stop the problem, but they didn't really understand the underlying solution of input validation. Um, I think almost everybody except for one team um, was vulnerable website-wise. And anything that was on the web could have been, anything that had a form could have been uh, exploited. So I think percentage-wise, I was very successful. And now, this is what you all have been waiting for. In the end, there was one winner. This is the team that did the best, earned the most points, distinguished themselves among peers, and we'll never hear the end of it. <laughs> it's team number seven, computer science and engineering from the University of Washington. Will that team please come up here and accept their award? In the big picture, everyone is a winner because of the experience. Students demand this. They all know that there are jobs out there managing networks. They know that technology is offering opportunities for career advancement. So they're demanding exposure to what we're doing in this kind of an environment. Kind of a really good example of what it's actually like in the uh, full security field. I mean, even with our uh, domain controller going down, something like that happens in real life. You have to just deal with it. And and it gave a pretty good glimpse of what it's actually going to be like. People will be attacking you, you're going to have problems with your network, and at the same time your boss is going to hand you a memo saying, I need this new thing tomorrow, I need this 30 minutes from now, which the injections in the competition really simulated well. You can see they're so absorbed at their computers, a pin would drop. You can't get between them and their computers as they go through this event. He essentially sat at home with the monitor glued to his face reading PDFs. What's interesting to me is that it bubbles up from students. That they're asking for these kinds of courses, this kind of exposure to technology. They're shopping programs that will open up opportunities to them to learn. There's quite a few of us that are actually focused in a, in a, in within a security within our degrees, and so this kind of practice is, has been great. They even came in on weekends asking faculty to put on training programs for them. I mean, I don't know undergraduates that actively seek extra work, except in this kind of an environment. There's big interest, and kids are looking for an opportunity to learn information assurance, cybersecurity, how to manage networks. I think if we came into this tomorrow and had to do it again, it would be, oh, we, we would do so much better. Yeah. So it's been, it's been an invaluable learning, learning experience. <laughs> Nothing is ever, ever, ever secure was the bottom line, ever security.